file consisted of object-oriented programming. In this episode, we're going to look at unit testing. So what is unit testing? Simply put, it's just testing small chunks of code. So that's all it means. It means breaking up a big long program into bits and testing that. It could be a class, it could be a method, it could be even part of a method. But unit testing, that's all it means. If you see the term unit testing, it just means testing a little bit of code. Normally what that means though is almost pretending we take it out and run, run it in a testing program that will feed values into that particular method or class or whatever it is. So then we can test quickly what it's about. So Python actually has a, a library for unit testing and it's called unit test, which is classic Python naming. And it provides a range of tools, a range of classes within that library for creating and running tests and unit tests in particular. So one of the key classes within the unit test library is called test case. And that provides a range of methods to help you compare values or set up tests or clean up after tests are done. So to write a unit test, what we do is we take this test case class and we create a subclass of it. So we just declare our class for testing and in brackets we put test case or unit test .test case, and then we write specific methods in that class for doing the testing. Normally we start each of those methods with the name test at the start of the method. So let's look at a very simple example. Let's look at an example to show whether or not the number one as a real number is the same value as the number one as an integer value, which it is. So this is what our code looks like. It's a bit daunting at first, but let's look at it one bit at a time. The first line is to import unit test. That brings in the whole library of unit test. Then our next line, as we said before, is to create a class, who, which is a subclass of test case and inherits all the methods and um, uh, attributes of the test case class. So our class is called check numbers. And then we have our main bit of code and our main bit of code is a method. We def a method called test if int equals float or test underscore int underscore float. And again, the name has to start with test to help us identify it as a test method. And then what our code says is assert equal one and 1.0. So um, assert equals is, is in test case. And it says check if the integer and real value one are the same. And then we, we just have a little bit of code at the end, name equals main, to check that this has been called directly from the command prompt being run as a script. So if we run it, what we get is dot minus 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 minus, ran one test in 0 0.020 seconds and okay. So that means the test was passed. In fact, the thing that tells us the test was passed is this dot here. What a dot means when you run a, a test case program is the test has passed if you get a dot. Let's try a different one where the test will fail. Let's say we use the exact same code, but instead of comparing an integer to a, a real number, let's compare a, a string to a real or float. So the string one, that is room number one, is that the same as 1.0? And we know that is not the case. So if we run that exact bit of code, what we get is f equals 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 fail. This test checks if string and values are, are the same. We get a big bunch of information, but the assert error is string one is not equal to 1.0. And then it says we ran one test for 0 0.060 seconds and there's one failure. So crucially, what tells us is that there's a failure is the F up here. So the first thing F means this test failed. What that F particularly tells us is that there's one method within the class and that is a fail. If we put those two tests together, checking if an integer is equal to a real, which it is, and checking if a string is equal to a real or a float, which it is not, and then we ran them together, what we get is dot F. So the dot F, as we said before, dot means pass, f means fail. So what that says is the first test passed, the second test did not. So then we can read the bunch of code afterwards, which tells us about the fail. But bottom line, we ran two tests in 0 0.01 seconds, and there was one failure. So if we, if we had three methods, and all three were a fail, it would say FFF. If all three were passed, it would be dot, dot, dot. 
if the middle one was a fail but the other two were passes, it'd be dot f dot. It's just a way of, of recording the, the fails or not. So then we've seen one of these assertions, assert equals, so let's look at some other assertions. A test case is really about, I think, putting a value into the system, putting an expected value in, and then putting a value in of a parameter and saying, are they the same? If I, if I have a program to double a number, and I put in the number 5, assert that the output is equal to 10. If I put in the number 4, assert the output is equal to 8. If I put in the number 3, assert the output is equal to 6. So it's making sure the program does what it's supposed to do. So we have, we saw it, we have self.assert equal. We also have another assertion called assert not equal to. We have two others, assert true and false. Assert true, it, it, it doesn't mean it just returns a true. Assert false, for example, means if I do this program, it returns the Boolean value false. It returns a blank value, a none, or returns a zero if it's a numerical field, or if it's a, a, a container type that returns an empty list dictionary, string, set, or tuple. And assert true passes if I return a true value, a non-zero value, or a, a container, which can be a list dictionary, string, set, or tuple, with values in it. So assert true doesn't just expect it to return true, it can return not any non-zero value as well, or any container with some value contained within it. In fact, look, there's a whole table of assertions here. For completeness, I put in the, the two sets we've already talked about. Assert equals, assert not equals, assert true, assert false. We've also asserted something is greater than, or greater than, or equal to, assert less, or less than, or equal to. We've asserted that a value is in a container, or not in a container. We've assert, assert that a value is exactly known, or not known. We've assert that two containers have the same sets of values in them, even if they're not in the same order. We've asserted a sequence is equal, assert a dictionary is equal, a set is equal, a list is equal, a tuple is equal, just various collectors or containers. And we have another one called assert raises. And because assert raises is the last one, we'll look at that in a little bit more detail. So assert raises is a method specifically to ensure that a function call raises a specific type of exception. So the test passes if the exception is raised, otherwise the test is a fail. So let's look at an example. If I have a program that's checking the average and the average, in this case, is the sum of the values in a list divided by the length of the list, so the normal, standard, mean, that average. So this is our, our opening bit of code. We import unit test, and then we define a method, which is not a test method, because the word test isn't in front of it, that just calculates the average. But then our test method is called test average, which inherits, um, uh, we have our, cl our class, that inherits um, test case, and then we, we have a program called test zero that just checks if the average of an empty string is zero. So, so if I have a, a set of numbers that have no values in it, it should give us no values. But if we divide, the length of that list is zero, therefore it should give us a divide by zero error. We said it before, if I try and divide a number by zero, it causes an error in computers. So that's what the code should do. Just for fun, I've shown you two ways of doing this. There's the test zero uh, test, which takes the code all in one line and says, uh, assert that there is a zero division error if my average, that method is called with a zero list. And then I've done the same code, but the instead of having the whole test within the line, what I've said is with self.asserts, zero division error, and then call my average on a new line with a blank string. So the first one is, is saying zero division error, check my array with the blank string, and the second one is saying check if it's zero division if I call my average with a blank string. So it's exactly the same. The only difference is this, I have the word with in front of the second one. We said it before when we're opening files and serializing objects. If I put the word with in front of a call, what that means is it will tidy up the 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 files, the input output files and things like that, the buffers, memory uh, collection, all that stuff once the program finishes. 
So I like the idea of the second way of calling this, where we don't do the whole statement in line and just assert raises zero division error, and then on the next line call the code, because we're saying the word width, it tidies up the any temporary files and things like that, which is good. And then our last bit of the code is the same, check that this is being run as a script. Let's look at a more complicated example now. Let's have two separate programs. One, one is the test program, and one is the program to be tested. So the program we're, we're, we're testing is called stats.python, and it has a st statistics list in it, and it has three methods in it, median, mean, and mode. And then we have a stats test program, which has a class, which is inherited from test class. And then it has three methods in it. It has an extra secret one we'll talk about in a second. But it's three methods called test mean, test median, test mode. So three methods to test three methods in the testing pro tested program. So here's the program we want to test. Uh, we're going to import a dictionary type, don't worry about that. And then we're going to create a list, but it's a new list. It's inherited from the list type. And it's called stats list. And we have a method that just does the mean. It's the same as before. It's the sum of the list divided by the length of the list. We've got a method called median, which is about finding the middle value in the list. And if the list is an even set of numbers, then it's the middle two values. If the list is an odd length, then it's the precise middle value, it's the median. And if we're, we were also getting the mode, which is the most frequently occurring number, so we do that by having a second array that counts how often each number occurs in the list. And if we find we find the, the, the value that value or values that occur the most in the list, we don't need to worry about the specifics of the code. We just need to pop over and look at the testing of it. So what we're going to do is create a new file, as we said, for testing the code. And we'll do exactly as before, import unit test and create a, a test case subclass. We're also going to use a new method that test case provides called setup. And the setup method accepts no arguments, but allows us to set up values to be run for the individual tests. So let's have a look at our test program. Our test program says import stats from stats, import stats list. So that is importing the program we've just written. So we wrote a program called stats.py, and we want to import the class in that, which is called stats list. That's the main class in it. And we also want to import unit test. And then we're going to create our, our test case subclass called test valid inputs. And we've created a method called setup. And that sets up what we're testing. In this case, it's, a, it's an array or list of values. And that's our, 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 our test set of uh, values. So from stats import stats list is importing the program we want to test. This is importing unit test then we're creating this setup method to initialize some values. Our program to test the mean simply says that we assert equals that if we call the program self.stats.mean, that the mean is 2.5. So if we calculate the mean on the list coming in, it's 2.5. So we want to check if the mean works by checking if we get the value 2.5. Looking at the median, which is the middle value, we're going to do two tests on it. All in the same method though. One test is checking if the median at the moment is 2.5, which is either, as we said, the middle value, or we take the, the two, two, if it's an odd number, it's the middle value. If it's an even number of values, then we take the middle two values and get the, the difference, add those two up and divide by two. So that's uh, 2.5. Now what we can do is add another value onto the list and then check if the median becomes three. So we've added the number four on and that changes the median to the number three. And a test for the mode is to check if the mode, the most occurring values are two and three. And then if we remove one number two, then the mo mode, the most occurring value will be the number three. So there are three test methods. The first method has one test within it. The second two methods have two tests within them each. If we run them, what we'll get is dot 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 and as we know dot 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 means all three tests have been passed we ran this the three tests in 0 0.05 seconds and they're all okay 
so just to say, as you will have noticed, the setup method is never called explicitly within any of the three test methods. The test suite does that for us. It's also important to note that the test median, test mode and test mean are completely independent of each other. When I run test median, even though I've added the number four onto the list, when I run test mode, which is the next method, that value is not on the list, then it gets reset back to the original values on the list because every time I finish a method, it recalls setup again and reinitializes the, the list to the original list. So in that way, the test can be executed in any order and the results of one test do not depend on another test. If we want to make changes, then keep them all in the same test method. If, but if we call two different test methods, then the values in one will not impact the values in the other because each one will call setup separately. The test case also offers a, another method called teardown. And teardown can be used particularly for file I.O. Sometimes when I create a new file and then it, it, there's some input-output error, that file gets partially written or some error file gets written or some cache file or some dump file or log file. So what the teardown method does is it ensures that the system is cleaned and there's no temporary files knocking around. Using the width will do a lot of that for you, but teardown can be used to make sure everything is hunky-dory and clear. So bottom line, when I run a test case, it should never have side effects either on the environment or on the class, the PAT settings or environmental settings or anything like that. And by using uh, our, our testing method, test case, and using teardown and setup, it won't have any side effects. So that's unit testing. Thanks very much. We'll see you on the next episode.